Well, let me ask you this, because Mike Tomlin uh, actually said his pass protection was, quote, awesome, the offensive line in the game. Pro Football Focus severely disagreed, giving Dan Moore a horrible grade, the lowest-rated tackle in the league with a career-worst nine pressures against and other guys, very low grades. Where's the truth here? How did the offensive line play? Well, I mean, they had six straight three and outs. So, I mean, they weren't on the offense. They weren't on the field long enough to ever um, sustain any offense. But, you know, when your quarterback gets sacked five times and he's hit nine times and he's chased like he was chased and didn't trust his protection at a certain point, you I, I you know, the, the grading systems out there, they do what they do. I don't, you know, but, you know, I would say that Mike uh, should not have been happy with the overall performance. They couldn't run the ball. And the quarterback wasn't good, but it wasn't just because, um, you know, he missed throws. He missed throws, but I don't think he felt like he had much time to really even try to get the ball down the field. You know, we were shocked, Brian, by how he played Pickett. Um, you, you, everybody thinks the jump from year one to year two, and I get it. It's one game. But that was the worst he's looked since he took over fourth game last year. Your thoughts on how he played? Uh, I thought he was, uh, you know, look, if, they averaged less than four yards of play. I mean, you can't get a whole lot worse than that in this league, and that falls on the quarterback. They weren't good on third downs. You know, like I said, six straight three and outs. Um, you know, you're not on the field to even get into the, the, the game plan. You know, but you have, to, you have to complete the third down throws. You can't throw it behind receivers and miss guys open in the middle of the field. I mean, it connects, especially when you get a clean pocket. And I thought there were three or four throws that were completions – where he just has to do his job. You just have to hit a moving target, and you got to put it in the right spot. And, you know, he missed Deontay Johnson in the middle of the field. He missed Fryer move for a first down. I mean, I could just go through the throws that he, he just flat out missed. And I think that's that. That's just – you could say, okay, week one maybe, but, you know, that's, that's not a good sign when you're just missing throws, especially when you see the guy on the other side didn't miss a single throw. You know, like you can't help but sort of compare and contrast – when you look at two basically kids that, you know, that were rookies a year ago and played about the same amount of, you know, plays, same amount of games. I mean, one guy made every throw possible and every read possible. The other guy was missing basic throws. Baldy, when you look uh, at the Steelers' offense in totality here, 36 games under Matt Canada, and they're the only team in the league over those 36 games that has not eclipsed the 400-yard mark even once. In those 36 games, they've scored more than 20 points in regulation, I think only seven times. So they haven't in the other all the other games. Do the Steelers have a decision to make here? Should they already have made a decision on Matt Canada? Is this guy, do you believe, a competent NFL coordinator? Well, I mean, I, I wanted to really see what I thought was going to be an improved roster for Matt. You know, like, I mean, you got Ben at the end of his career. You got a rookie. You know, you had a, you know, a stopgap quarterback in Trubisky. Like, I could make all the excuses for any coordinator when you're going through all of that. And an offensive line that wasn't very good. Um, I could make excuses like, okay, what, what offense should they run if you have these deficiencies? Um, and so I, I defended, I would defend that. And I thought, okay, and for Russia, but you can't leave uh, Akershire Stadium or watch that game on Sunday and go, this is an, an improved roster, especially in offense. You, you can't say that the way they got just dismantled in every way possible by the 49ers. And yes, there's a lot of teams that played poorly week one. Um, you know, you, you, we, we saw who they all were, but who cares about the other teams? This is the team that's supposed to be an improved roster, and it should be a better offense. And they didn't show any signs of it on Sunday. So, look, he's under the microscope. And if things don't improve Monday night against Cleveland, then you got it. You got to put him on the hot seat. You just do. It's just it's, it's just the way it works. Like somebody's got to be a fall guy when things aren't working, and things weren't working week one. Brian, you mentioned the uh, the Browns. Um, obviously, we saw what they did to the Bengals. They come in here as favorites, I think, for the first time since you and I were very much younger men. I think it's back in the early 90s. Are the Browns for real from what you saw in them, or is that just a one game, too? Well, I mean, Jim Schwartz is a – I like Jim. 
he's a new defense coordinator. He's won a Super Bowl with the Eagles. Like, he is very confident about what he's doing. But the thing that jumped out at me in watching that game was, like, I've turned on the Browns film over any time in the last three years, and I, all I would see is breakdowns. You just see one breakdown after another, and I didn't see that. And that's coaching. That's a good sign. But then I saw a defensive line that just whipped, you know, the Cincinnati Bengals up front. I mean, it wasn't just Miles Garrett. Zadarius Smith, uh, Dalvin Tomlinson, Okoronkwo. Like, they're a lot better up front. They're very good. And then you go, okay, one-on-one, they're, they're pretty darn good up front. But then if you look at some of the things that they did with Miles Garrett, how they moved him around, how they – when they blitzed, how they blitzed. Like, it, and then the way that every single player in the secondary – from Emerson to Ward to Delpit, they all played well against an elite receiving court. So they looked much better defensively. It was a butt kicking. Okay, you say, oh, yeah, Joe Burrow didn't play preseason. He's rusty. He's got to get that. All right. He didn't have much time to do anything in that game. And then um, offensively, they were very slow starting. They didn't look very good. Um, they got a new rookie right tackle who played great. He's going to see TJ Watt out there. It's going to be a, a matchup that. I'm sure TJ feels like he can do exactly what he did last week uh, against the 49ers, and he very well might. But as good as TJ was, um, you know, that was a butt kicking by the, by the 49ers. What did you think of Deshaun Watson in that game? I didn't think – I thought he was terrible in the first half. Like, I thought he missed throws. He, he had Marcus Gold, uh, Goodwin wide open on a streak route. Like, he severely underthrew it with time. I thought he was off. I thought as the game went on, he got a lot better, and the Browns got a lot better. I mean, they really leaned on the run game in the second half. Nick Chubb really came alive. Like, he was just punishing people the way he does. Um, it took them a full half, though, to wake up before they started looking like an offense. 